Oh my god, it's so hot. It's only like 80 degrees in Michigan, but I'm dying right now. I had a meeting at 10.30, which I'm now going to be late to. And then afterwards, I wanted to go to the gym. And I wanted to do this without carrying a big backpack or something to haul my clothes in. So I just layered everything on top of each other. So I have a flannel, a t-shirt, and then a beater, and then pants, and then uh, shorts, and then like, um, I don't want to say leggings, but I can't think of the neck compression tights. And I am dying. So, so far, so bad. Right now I'm headed to the store to get an energy drink. Initially I was waiting on an Uber driver, but they were like 15 minutes away, which is insane. And I realized in that 15 minute time frame that I could probably walk. So just trying to be more efficient with money and time and things of that nature. There's no point in waiting for 15 minutes if I can get there in 15 minutes. So yeah, that's what we're doing. Where's the kickstart? Oh, boom, there it is. Um, Limeade. So I always get these energy drinks and then I realize that it's almost impossible for me to like drink and vlog. Like, this just doesn't seem natural to me. So, I'm gonna finish this off and I'll be back. Pro tip. Don't drink energy drinks and work out on an empty stomach. I feel like shit. So I know a few of you are wondering, so I'm just gonna answer your question. No, I didn't shower, and yes, I'm wearing the same clothes. So while I was working out, I saw the people mover go by. And I've taken you guys on that before. And it's just amazing how, even though I live in a city and I live downtown, I constantly forget about this type of transportation. I'm a walker, and I do so because obviously I take street pictures, and it's good for me. But every now and then, people mover can just be like a beneficial like commute because you get to see parts of the city that you normally wouldn't walk to. And that can like motivate you to like do different things. So I'm not looking for motivation right now, but I am gonna take it just to get home faster because I haven't ate all day and I'm starving. I recorded a scene similar to that uh, about a month ago and it took me like five minutes to do it properly. I just did it in like 15 seconds, so definitely getting better at this vlogging thing. <sighs> Gotta fix these escalators. So I was talking to this gentleman about the people he said like around lunchtime, it's normally pretty packed. So I think I'm just gonna sit on here for a little bit, let it go round and round, and uh, maybe take some photographs of people if they let me. So it should be fun. I think actually I'm gonna record it on my iPhone. That way I can, uh, you guys can hear it, and I can like click the shutter while I'm recording the video. So we're gonna do that right now. All right, so, so far it's pretty empty. People Mover has three different cards, and each stop has like a different entrance, so it's hard to gauge which card they want to get on. Right now, I'm in the far card. I got on this one because I felt like people would want to see the view of like Detroit. Uh, but yeah, so far, so empty. I did get one person that I did photograph, but I forgot to record the interaction, so I'll show you guys those pictures now. guys don't know how excited I just got. I thought this was a person and he was getting on. And I was like, oh my God, he looks so interesting. I was, I was so excited, but it's, it's just a statue. It looks so lifelike. I'm assuming this is like some kind of big deal in Detroit or like a milestone owner. It's been here for years. And that's just how you tell us that I'm a shitty Detroiter and I got a lot of work to do. So the most amazing thing happened to me earlier today. I was on the people mover and just as I was about to get off this guy like semi dressed up got on and I just asked him like hey do you know like if the people mover is always this dead around this time and then he just looked at me and said I don't know and then I was like well hey I'm doing this project 
where I just take pictures of people, you know, during their daily commute. And would you, would you mind if I just grabbed a couple photos while you, you know, sit here and, and do your thing? And he was like, I'd rather not be on camera. And I was just like, I totally understand. I don't like being on camera either. And then he was like, well, why do you take pictures? And I was just like, well, to meet people, you know? And then he asked what kind of pictures that I take. Then I was like, I do mostly street photography. Um, I try to focus on like expressions and things like that. So if you're walking by me and you have like a funny face or you look angry or happy, then I like taking that picture. And he was just like, oh, so do you tell the people you took the picture? And I was like, no, I just let them walk by. And he was like, how are you meeting people? And I was like, boom! I don't know. I'm not meeting people. That's the thing. And when we got off that, uh, whatever it is, train or whatever, I had like this spaced out moment where I just sat down for like five minutes and I was like, what am I doing? For two years, I've been taking these candid pictures when I got into photography to meet people. It, is, it just really made me feel inspired and then I realized at that moment that that was like the missing piece to my work because I like what I create, but I've always felt like it needs to be something more. You know, it needs to have that purpose and, and that purpose is telling stories. And, and I think that I knew this the whole time, but like as a creative, I didn't want to copy like Brandon and he, Humans in New York, but nobody owns ideas. Like, you, you know what I mean? If, if you want to tell stories and tell stories, you know, you can't hold yourself back because other people did it first or at scale. And I know like Brandon's not saying, hey, don't do it. That's just me mentally doing that to myself. And I'm just reciting my own thoughts to you guys. So just in case you're doing that, then you realize like no one owns ideas. I can go do this too. Um, you know, it's still a different story and it still has its own individual purpose. So yeah, I, I don't know guys. I just feel really inspired and I thought I want to share that story with you. Uh, maybe that helped a few people who are kind of in the same boat as me, who like subconsciously held themselves back. But I think that's going to be my mission moving forward is to... Stop taking like, you know, pictures of like fleeting moments and people walking by and, and get more intimate and, you know, try to build with people. And and the reason I like the idea of doing it like on the people mover or at this bus stop is because these people are naturally, you know, waiting. They have five, ten minutes to talk. So like once you take their pictures, it's awkward if you don't interact as opposed to taking a picture more like, you know, the busiest street in the world, which is Woodward. And everyone's just trying to get from A to B as fast as they can so they don't have a lot of time to communicate with you. So, yeah, I'm just really inspired by that. Um, I'm going to go out and take some more pictures for you guys. Today I decided that I'm going to use my vlog camera to take photographs because I've never used it for anything else but video. And it's supposedly supposed to be good. It only shoots like in JPEG, so there's no RAW. But because I convert most of my pictures to black and white anyway, that's not a big deal to me. Um, Unfortunately, I'm too lazy to like unattach the GoPro and reattach the camera back to the uh, Grillapod. So I probably won't be talking to you guys until after the session. But I'm sure you guys are really like look at photographs anyway. This is my GoPro. I left it at home. There's no footage. All right, guys, I think it's time to call it a night. But before we do so, you know we have to have vlog talk. Uh, if you're not familiar with vlog talk, then this is where I just talk to you at the end of the vlog. And uh, yeah, so make sure you stick around for the entire time to get my daily dose of insight and, you know, all things Keenan. <laughs> anyway, um, I just finished editing those photos from that set that you guys didn't see. Again, sorry about leaving my GoPro at home. Uh, amateur mistake. But, you know, life happens. Uh, however, I did, um, I guess some good came out of that. So I named the blog post uh, Camera Therapy No Pressure. And the reason I called it that is because for the last two months, I've been kind of recording myself in my sessions. And this was one of the first times where I didn't have a GoPro attached. And it was just... It was just calming, you know, it was really peaceful. I know no one's asking me to record myself, but I'm just stating that, you know, I went out there and I just was, I just captured what was there, you know. It wasn't a very busy day. Again, uh, 
weekdays in the city aren't as populated as like other cities. We're more of like a Friday, Saturday type of uh, town. But yeah, so it, I guess it just feel good to go out there and just have no pressure and just capture whatever was out there. And, and I feel like that allowed me to stay out there longer. Um, I actually shot with my vlog camera this time. So again, this is the Sony HX90. And it did okay. I shoot in burst mode and I hated that after each burst, it had to process the images. Like, um, I mean, I think all cameras do that. But it actually showed me like the processing stage and mentally that was stupid and it hindered me from shooting until it was done processing. So, boom, thumbs down to that. I can't wait until I get an actual camera. Um, I, I hate to do this, but if you guys like want to support me and help me get this camera faster, then I do have a, a Patreon account and you can go down there and just donate uh, whatever you want, whether it's a dollar or ten dollars. I think... Um, we normally get like 100 views, so if 100 people donated 10 bucks, then I'd be able to get that camera tomorrow. I know that's probably not going to happen, but just thought I would throw it out there. Anyway, I'm rambling. Let's end this with the quote of the night um, or a day. And this one's from Chris Jami. Don't know who that is. And it says, if you're waiting until you feel talented enough to make it, you'll never make it. And I love this quote because... It kind of resonates what I'm doing. So I know a few of you watch this vlog, and I know some of you probably think like, "Oh, Keenan's not really good, or his pictures aren't even that great." Um, first of all, disclaimer: I did injure my knee, and I, I currently don't have the camera that I'm comfortable shooting with. And my iPhone has a very bad cracked screen, so it's kind of hard to compose and do all things great. But beyond that excuse, um, it's okay to for me to not be great and document what I'm doing. And I, I think people try to wait until they're like an expert or, you know, just, just really like talented. And, 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 and I guess that's fine, but like I'm practicing on camera. You know, I'm recording myself practicing. There's nothing wrong with that. And, and it's okay to document yourself. It's okay to say I'm a photographer. It's okay to have a website. It's okay to go all in, even if you're not, uh, it's super talented or you know you know what I mean or if you're not just there yet you know you don't have to be the greatest of all time to do something I think doing something is what's going to help you be the greatest of all time so if you see my images and you don't like them um, or you don't think they're like the greatest street images of all time then that's fine you know uh, me doing this every day is going to help me get out more it's going to help me practice and it's going to help me one day to you know meet your standards so I love that quote. Um, I think everybody should do something. So if you're a photographer and you watch this and you don't have a blog, like you don't have to do YouTube, like do something. Like get off Instagram because Instagram might die in a few years and your time is just going to be wasted because you invested it all into that social platform. Get your own platform, build your own audience, and, and don't have to worry about, you know, regaining people every time something new comes out so yeah that, that's the end of this vlog guys um tomorrow today i don't know there was going to be two new posts on a blog by the time this is posted so make sure you go see those and yeah i'll catch you guys tomorrow Later.